So there you go. Your man, your uh, your husband, your dad was amazing. I didn't know him very, very well, but the little times that I spoke to him were just enchanting. They were wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My father was, when you talked to him, he left a footprint on your, on your heart. Aww. Yeah. It did with me. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And Stu, Haley, started, your microphone is off. Do you know how to turn it on? Ma, turn your microphone on. Mute. Unmute yourself, there you go. Ma. Hello. There you are. Hi. Hi, Louise. Hello. How do, how do everybody? <laughs> Hi, Here's Lorraine. My madre. Louise. Louise, I always call you Lorraine. You know that. Which <laughs> I'm sorry, but I, I I can't get a hold of Lorraine Gorski. If anybody can, please let me know. I'm a little concerned about her. You know, I haven't heard from her in, in over a month. And I've tried calling her and there's nothing. And I have no Doesn't Justine live near her or, or no uh, Jane, Jane 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 does. Jane does. Oh, Jane. Oh, but uh, last time I and talked, there's to another Jane. one we haven't heard from is Jane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe us, maybe us girls got to give a give a call out to them. I, I I wish you would. I think it's a good idea because yeah. we love all of our seniors. Yeah. Yep. Well, thank you so much for being here. It is already 7 p.m., so we will go ahead and start with Honey on the Slate. Thank you, John, for another study and I will mute Roseanne is on here. Take it away, John. Thank you, Lilia. You do a great job. Um, and if you guys are anything like me, um, you could use a little unplugging from the cares of the world. And so let's turn our uh, attention on heavenly things and um, cast down imaginations and any high thing that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God. There is an adversary out there, and we do have an unruly flesh. And if we yield to that, if we listen to that and pay attention to that, uh, it'll militate against the, the marvelous truths that we have in the Bible and that we have by the Holy Spirit within us. So thank God we do have Bibles. So I've got mine open to chapter 10, we're winding down chapter 10, and we're moving into chapter 11 tonight. And you'll remember that when we, um, we left off, it was where Jesus had been still going back and forth with the Pharisees, and they were not believing his words, and they, and they were ignoring his miracles. And he says, I have told you who I am. They were imploring, tell us, tell us who you are. You're, you're the Messiah, then just tell us. And he says, I have told you. And he was referring to the miracles that he did testified as to who he was, the truth about who he was. And they would have nothing of that. Um, so verse 39, therefore they sought again to arrest him. And he escaped out of their hand. Reminded me of some other verses. Um, and John 8, 59, again, same kind of deal. They took up stones to cast at him or to kill him, basically. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them. Luke 4, 30, in a similar incident. But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way. Nothing can stop him until he lays down his life. Um, also, you will see um, the road to Emmaus in 2416 of Luke. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. In other words, it was concealed from their knowing through their eyes of who this was. They, that's a cosmic thing that God did. It was a miracle. Their eyes were holding. He, he withdrew their knowledge of their use of the eyes of identifying who he was. Then it goes to Psalm 1829, for by thee, I have run through a troop, the troop, a troop of soldiers opposing you. And he, this, the, the psalmist is saying it's for by thee, through God, I have run through a troop and by my God, I have leaped 
over a wall. Walls in those days are high. You don't leap over a wall unless it's supernatural with God's help, which is what we see Jesus doing in, in these incidents. Also, uh, Psalm 37, 33 will add more light onto it. The Lord will not leave him in his or in the adversary's hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. So that's how groovy God, and, uh, God is. Now, um, so he's split from there and he goes again beyond the Jordan into the place where John at first baptized. This is some years later after that. And he res resorted, many resorted unto him, uh, came unto him and, and hung with him. And, but this is, the this is the last time that he spoke publicly, that he ministered publicly. This is in the last parts of his, of his ministry. And so many resorted there with him, and they said, John did no miracle. But all the things that John spake of this man were true. A prophet and is not, it's not incumbent upon a prophet to have worked miracles. John didn't, but the, he did the most important thing that can be done. He identified Jesus and he pointed to him. He is the one. So it's not me. It's he is the one. And that's our ministry now in presenting Jesus to people. It's not about me. It's about him. It's about his relationship to you and me. But we always point up, we always point to Jesus. So we're on the verge of another mighty miracle, perhaps. They're all mighty, but highly significant. Uh, big deal miracle. That's raising Lazarus. Now remember how these signs, as John calls them, uh, there's eight of them. And when they're first introduced, he says, this was the first, blah, blah, blah. And then actually he says, and this is the second, implying keep track of these miracles, of these eight miracles. Because the last one, is it, it, the last one is a, a picture of something that's fulfilled in the eighth. The second is fulfilled in the seventh or realized in the seventh. So there, it's an introversion working toward the center. Well, we're in the, um, uh, the second corresponding to the seventh. The, the second miracle was the ruler's son who was at the verge of death. And Jesus um, said his word and healed him. And the seventh miracle that corresponds to that is the sister's brother, Lazarus. Um, before I elaborate on that, I want to clear some things up. There's, um, there's two Lazarus in the Bible. Don't confuse the guy in Abraham's bosom um, with a rich man um, with this Lazarus. This Lazarus is the, um, uh, the, the brother of, um, of Mary and, and Martha. Now, also, it's really easy to confuse the Marys. There's six Marys in the Bible. we we'll go over this really, really quickly. Um, there's Mary is, when used of the Lord's mother, is always in the Greek as Miriam, the Hebrew Miriam. The other five are usually Maria. Number one, Mary, the mother of our Lord, right? The context never leaves any room for any doubt about her identity. It's always identified as uh, the mother of our Lord. Number two, Mary, the mother of James. Um, uh, uh, let's see. She is called the other Mary. But you find her in Matthew, Mark, and in Luke. She's referred to, the, and she's also the wife of Cle Cleopas. Uh, you find that in John 19.25. Then there's this Mary in uh, where we are in 11, Mary, the sister of Martha. Mary is the one who anointed the Lord's feet. Uh, she's mentioned by name only in Luke and in John. And then Mary Magdalene or of Magdala. She's identified with where she's from. Magdalene, Mag Magdala is a place from uh, Matthew. She is always to be identified by this designation. Uh, you find her in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There's no authority 
whatever for identifying her with the unnamed woman in Luke. Um, we have number five, Mary, the mother of John, uh, John Mark, and then Mary, one of Paul's helpers. So be careful because Mary is such, the Mary, the mother of the Lord is such a star that when we ever we see Mary, we know, be careful that you're discerning your Marys here. Um, now back to discerning these, these miracles because we're, I, we've started out reading John with this in view, and I know it's a little bit different way to, uh, to see it in the scriptures, but it's, a, it's an important, powerful thing. Now, the, the miracles, these miracles, these signs are all teaching us something about Israel. Israel as is a nation, Israel as um, uh, Jacob's offspring and the nation of Israel. And then, uh, like we, we see in this particular case, the, the ruler's son and the sister's brother, um, it, it's showing us, it's signifying the national destitution of all that is good in Israel. And in the second and the seventh miracle, it's the destitution of their national life. The sign in each verse, in each case, I should say, is connected with death, death of the ruler's son, death of uh, Mary and Martha's brother. And as in all the other pairs of these miracles, the latter one is an advance upon the former one. So here, the son being on the point of death in 447, in the death chamber, the brother is actually dead. The son was on the the verge of death. In this case, Lazarus is actually dead. And he's in the tomb. The former, which took place during the first period of the Lord's ministry. Now we're seeing the last period of the Lord's ministry. The first with the boy took place in the first part of our Lord's ministry. Uh, that was the proclamation of the kingdom, bringing the good news. Here's the king. The kingdom is here. Here's the king. Now, the nation Israel at that time was at the point of death, spiritual death. When he comes, now is the time to bring the kingdom. They weren't actually dead yet, though. But in the later case, the, the sign of, with Lazarus was given in the third period of his ministry when the king had already been rejected. They just want to kill him now. Now, there's some other interesting things about this. So the national life of Israel was in God's sight, practically dead. They rejected the king. They rejected God. They're like, okay, now I know. Now we're going to, to all, the, all the Gentile nations. You all have to go in the same door now. You had your chance. Um, so um, we know the nation's only hope was in Messiah, the, the life giver. The, the, you know, God's in the the business of bringing uh, things that are dead, bringing them to life, as in the creation account and as in regeneration. Um, he's the life giver. Now, he will raise again, uh, raise Israel again from the dead. Uh, remember the bones in, in Ezekiel 37, uh, where they became a living uh, you know, bones became muscles on him, and he saw we saw Israel come alive there as God showed the prophet. Um, there is a reference here to um, Hosea three fourteen. Let me grab that real quickly here. Hosea three fourteen. Hosea three fourteen. No, oh, it's not Hosea 3.14. It's 13.14. Can that be right? Are there 13 verses in Hosea? No? Yes, 13.14. Um, prophet Hosea, when Ephraim spake trembling, he exalted himself in Israel. 
Oh, but when he offended Baal, he died. So there is also the two days. Well, let me read, let me read, read for it a little bit. Now, a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. And it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. And therefore, the sisters set out unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. Jesus was really close friends with them. It wasn't just they were acquaintances. He loved all three of them. And so they'd seen him do miracles. They knew of him raising people from the dead. So they sent for Jesus and they, they announced to him that thou, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Doesn't that sound odd? This guy's sick. We better go. No, Jesus, two days stayed there. Now, let's go back to on the two days. Um, Hosea 6, 1 through 3. Hosea 6, 1 through 3. Come, let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. In the third day, he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Speaking of Israel, remember, these signs are related to Israel. And we've got, oh, that should be enough. So there's the thing about these two days. Well, also, he wanted to raise him from the dead. You know, he could. Jesus knew he could. Yeah, he could heal him, but he wanted it like he, God wanted Israel to completely die spiritually. They had the opportunity. They died. Lazarus died so that Jesus could raise them from the dead. That He wanted that on his record. Not just that he raised them from the dead, but that he was in the tomb and he was rotting. Let me add something to this. Um, one might say that it's foolish to think that one miracle is more, di more difficult than another, but the seventh sign is unique. There's no parallel whatever for the raising of a man who's been dead for four days and whose body had begun to putrefy, other than the Ezekiel prophecy with the bones that grew muscles on him and stuff. That was a completely different kind of a thing, but... Um, The other three evangelists, uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, wrote their histories during the life of Lazarus and that they did not mention him. Well, think about that. It's only mentioned in John by name for this. But the other evangelists wrote their histories during the life of Lazarus. It, there is commentators that speculate that I, th I think for good reason that they did not mention him for fear of exciting the malice of the Jews against him. John's gospel was the last one written and it very well could be that Lazarus had already died a natural death after being resurrected but the other three was before that Lazarus was still among them and they didn't want to draw more attention to him the Jews seek him out and try to silence him, try to kill him because of his testimony. But that was interesting. By the way, Lazarus is the Greek form of Eleazar, which means God is my help. Um, so we see uh, the girls call 
uh, they send a message to Jesus that Lazarus is sick, expecting that uh, that he would miraculously meet their needs. Certainly, because he loved them, they were very close. Um, they did not specifically ask Jesus to come and and heal Lazarus. They felt they did not need to. That it was enough to simply tell Jesus what the problem was. But he stayed two more days upon hearing that. Let's go on. So when he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode there two days, still in the same place where he was. Then after that, says he to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. His disciples say to him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, which means kill thee, and goest thou uh, there again? Are you crazy? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in a day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbles not, because he sees uh, the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbles because there's no light in him. Basically, you work in the daytime. It's still daytime. I still got work to do. Let's go. There will come a darkness, a time when I cannot work. Well, these things said he, and after that he said those things to them, our friend Lazarus sleepeth. But I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Well, there was uh, Jairus' daughter, wasn't that? The one, he said, the, 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 the damsel sleepeth. She's not, she's not dead. She's sleeping. Like, what? She's dead. In his mind, he can to, to awaken her is to bring her back to life. He looked at Lazarus. He's, he, he sleepeth. We're going to go. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death. But they thought that he had spoken of taking a rest, taking a nap, that he was sleeping. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead, you guys. And I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent that you may believe. Nevertheless, let's go unto him. And then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, that means twin. Um, he looked like Jesus. He was called his twin. He resembled Jesus. And Thomas says, well, let's, let's also go. We'll go with him into a hostile place where they're seeking to kill Jesus. Well, here, the guy that looks just like Jesus says, I'm in, let's go. Knowing he was putting his own life at, at risk. He could be easily mistaken for Jesus and killed. He says, let us also go that we may die with him. Remember, doubting Thomas, he was always had this negative re resolve to things. He says, we're going to, let's go. Let's get it over with. Let's die. That's kind of how, what he was saying. Then when Jesus came, he found, um, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now, Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 50 furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and to Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then Martha said unto Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not have died. Thanks a lot. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it. Jesus says unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, oh, I know. He'll rise again in the resurrection of the last day. She had resigned herself to the fact that you can't raise somebody from the dead. 
who's in the tomb, is buried. We can't bring him back to life. In the resurrection, in the, after he resurrects, goes to heaven, but he's not going to be alive here anymore. And Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection. And the life. And there's another one of the I am's, how God spoke to Moses. I am that I am. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. God is in the business of new life, of bringing the dead to life. He did it in the creation, and he's done it with lost mankind. He's done it with dead mankind, dead in our sins. And he's showing us with Lazarus. Now, all these signs that he did, Certainly, it was persu it persuaded the believers. It persuaded the unbelievers. This guy is true. It pissed off the Jews. There's a strategy to all of this. I mean, the Pharisees. It pissed off the Pharisees. These were visible historical things that are contrary to the laws of nature and science. Only God could do prophecies. Only God could tell the future before it happens. But you know who else it pissed off was the devils. He was serving them notice. Their, them and their stupid gods, their day is done. He comes, he walks on water. He casts out devils. He raises the dead, heals the sick, doing good wherever he goes. It's not what devils do. It's not what they want to do. It's not what their gods, you know, the god people following these idols. It's not what they get from them. They're imposters. They have no life in them. Now life itself comes. The one who speaks of those things which be not as though they were. The one who gives life to the dead, who regenerates us in Christ. God's in the business of bringing death to life. Genesis, regeneration in us, a new life, a new birth in us, a new creation. Thy brother shall live. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. This just gets better and better. Believest thou this? She said unto him, Yea, Lord. I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had so said, she went her way, and she called Mary her sister secretly, saying, The Master is come, and he calls for thee. Well, I like that verse. In isolation, the master has come and he calls for thee. Adam, where are you? The master has come and he's called for you. And he knows your name. He knows how many hairs are on your head. The woman at the well, he knows all things that she ever did. The master has come and calleth for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now, Jesus was not yet come into the town. They're still a little bit outside of their town. And I'll look at my clock here. Holy cow, where does the time go? And he's not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews then were with her in the house and they comforted her. And when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out and followed her saying, she goes under the grave to weep there. She's running to see Jesus. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, and they said to them, 
where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Shortest verse in the Bible. And I've heard a number of speculations on really why, what he was crying about. Was he crying for the unbelief of the Jews? He wasn't crying for the loss of Lazarus. He's still alive in, in Jesus' thoughts. It's just a, this much away from resurrecting him. Was it the fact that Mary and Martha, who knew him so well, would have an unbelief, not, not realizing fully who he was, what he could do? I don't know. But then Jesus, um, excuse me, then said the Jews, behold how he loved him. <coughs> well, I wasn't why he was crying. <coughs> Remember, he was glad Lazarus died. He says, watch this. Now I can really show you something. And some of them said, could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? But the two days. <coughs> it was after two days. He did, it was, did God write that and Jesus knew it? Or did Jesus look ahead? Did God look ahead and see, okay, this is Jesus is going to do that. And that's going to be, we're going to write it, have Hosea write it 400 years earlier. I don't care. That's how God works. It's all an introversion, the past and the future merging together right into whatever Jesus is. Oh, man. Well, we'll have more to look forward to next week. Isn't this juicy stuff? You enjoying this? I'm, I'm loving it. I am loving it. Good, good, good. Well, let's talk. I'll, I'll just sit back and be quiet. I'll have a, a drink of, of uh, living water. And, um, and then we'll let the good times roll. We've got a few minutes, right? Can you hang and talk? Sure. Anybody got I'm any hanging. questions? Stimulate any thoughts? Don't all talk at the same time now. I didn't know that about the miracles, um, the sequence of them. I don't, I don't know if I ever heard that before. Oh, you're unmuted. The what? Oh. Huh? Go Let ahead. me, I'm going to give you a quick primer. I'm going to give you a quick primer on the eight miracles. It's very specific why he chose. There were so many. John was the one who said, if we wrote all of them down, the books, there aren't enough books could hold them all. He was very strategic in the, um, the eight miracles that he selected because, uh, just go over this real quickly. Um, it's called an, an, an introversion. An introversion is the beginning and the end working together, relating, you know, the last one relating to the, the, the first one relating to the last one, the next one related to the second of the last, et cetera, et cetera. So we got that eight, we have four pairs of miracles. Um, it shows that the first one corresponds with the eighth miracle. The second corresponds with the seventh, the third with the sixth, the fourth with the fifth. So there's four pairs, the, the latter sign and the signification in each pair is always an advance on the former. It's a, it's a you take the miracle of the, the young boy being healed with Lazarus being raised. So the last one is an advance on the for, first one. The first one, these are, these are, such, these are depicting Israel's condition, um, like Israel's blindness and Israel's inability to sustain itself. All these things are pictures of Israel. Um, I don't want to get to, uh, I, I, I can reveal it toward the end of the, of the thing when we get to the last miracle, yes. but um, keep these things in, in mind. Um, what uh, what this, were you reading from? Uh, I, 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 my primary Bible is Bullinger's Companion Bible. Oh, and, it's in the Companion? Okay. Yeah, I should be able you, to you look can that find up. The Companion Bible in the, in, in the appendix is number 176. Mm-hmm. If you have a, a companion Bible the, yeah. in, in the appendix, yeah. it's 176. It's all there, and it's glorious. I always thought that the King James Version was the one that we should be reading. It is, is a that... King James. Well, I mean, it's the authorized version. It, Bollinger didn't write it, and he didn't translate it. He, it's filled with his notes. There's study Bibles, right? 
Study Bible, what you, your regular Bibles just have the scriptures in them. Then you have the red letter ones where they put Jesus' words in red. And then you have the study Bible, the Thompson chain reference. The, um, there's a lot of study Bibles. Uh, the notes are not inspired. They can be wrong. I mean, there was a, a, the fad when Jim and Tammy Faye Baker and Pat Robertson and all these ministries, they were all coming out with their own study Bibles. Well, they're probably rebranding existing study Bibles, or maybe they had their own. I mean, Kenneth Copeland had a study Bible. Everybody has one. Doesn't mean that they're inspired. <laughs> the Bollinger one, which was written, he produced this in the early part of the last century, is fantastic. Yeah, I, I just, I just I, absolutely love it. And yeah, I just, I, 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 I will tell you, I will, I will say that I agree with that because on my, what I follow when we talk, when you are in front of us every Sunday, um, I have my father's Bible in front of me and he'll have notes. And when you start to uh, 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 speak about, you know, proverb and, and you know, Bible verse and, Is there and his chapter, notes that he wrote in there and, and he'll have a cross out. Okay. And it's interesting because when you, it's funny because when you say something and I think it's because of my dad's, my dad didn't just have this tunnel vision with Grace Fellowship. He was with Les Feldick. He was with these preachers and these pastors that my father was very, very well read in the Bible. So I will look at his notes and he'll have cross outs and it'll be like, um, I, I wish I could give you an example, but instead of saying uh, your mind, it'll be, it'll be something like we are together. Yeah, you know? that, that's a clarifying, you know, that those are words. Yeah. Those are very helpful. There's wisdom in the multitude of counsel, the Bible says. I study under a lot of different people. I, 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 I no one pastor, teacher uh, is perfect. And so right. by, by, by putting all the ones that agree together, listening, we're talking about the same Jesus, and you get another aspect that helps to reinforce the, the doctrinal underpinnings of the whole context of the Bible, the whole counsel of God. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't like that people who are just myopically following one blindly following one teacher because that can yeah that was yeah my money. father was my father was very smart like that and I appreciate that you know this about him that that's just how he was and so I'm following his his way of, of well, that's learning. actually you have you have family notes but the, yeah. the study bibles like the Bollinger um, each page the left column is a scripture the right page is all these notes that talk about uh, like where, when, which is the first mention? What was what Greek word does this mean? How, what this wasn't in the original, uh, yeah. the original um, uh, t Greek text. So there's yeah. it's helping to correct yeah. you know th those kind of things in there and shed light on it. And its appendix is very deep and very marvelous and goes into a lot of things that's most of it way over my head. But um, a, a study Bible is is something to, to have to have close at hand when you're reading the Bible. Either you read that it to or me. have one available that because to it me. helps you think. Yeah, you said to that to me very early on when I started coming to, to church every Sunday. You said, Julie, and I, I came up to you and this is what you said to me, just get a good study Bible. And you gave me a Bible and I've carried that. I have my father's Bible and I have the one that you gave me, John. Oh, I did that, I don't know. Yep. Hey, John Cronin, you were you I wanted to some. jump in real fast and say even the aspect, if we look at the Gospels themselves, you're having different, the different authors inspired by the Holy Spirit are yeah. given different aspects of Christ, his humanity, his divinity, uh, you know, just in the four Gospels itself. And even in all the rest of the scripture, uh, some scriptures are concerned with history and 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 following the, the the ups and downs of Israel others are talking about different aspects of God's character so even in what the Holy Spirit has assembled for us in what in scripture we have different viewpoints and different facets of the uh, same thing the same God I think it's like we have two eyes if you just have one eye 
you don't have depth perception. So when you have two eyes or with like an insect has a compound eye, all those different angles give you better depth perception of the same object. You're looking at the same thing. So, uh, so I think it's a, it is important. I, I do like the Bullinger study Bible. So I, I will say that. So yeah, how do you look at the 176 to get that intro version on the eight signs? Yeah, the companion Bible is what yeah. it's called. One John's talking about. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll, I will go get one. Yeah. Yeah, you can get it on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bollinger Companion Bible. It's a big hard box. That's the one that I carry. <laughs> I mean, it, it, that there, it's so many pages to just flip through it. it. You can't just pick it up and fold it and flip through to where you want to go. So it takes me forever to find. I'm I'm gonna get a. I need to get a like a leather bound smaller one to use from the pulpit because my, I, I like it because I got all my notes in it. I, you know, with my magic markers and stuff, you know, highlighters, I'm, I got all my notes in there too, like your dad did. So I like it, but I can make, I can figure out another way to get my notes up there when I'm preaching. <coughs> Sorry. Oh. I'm so coughing. Well, you're getting better, right? Was that? You're getting better. Did you have? I am. And you that's why, like I said, I didn't come to church because I couldn't literally hold a conversation without coughing. Oh. Well, I I can't imagine you not better? talking. <laughs> oh, I am. I do. I do. I do feel totally better. My grandson wore me out today. I watch him on Wednesdays and Thursdays, like I said. And oh my gosh, we did everything today. <laughs> <laughs> he had to catch up on it all. So, mm -hmm. how old is he? He's three. Uh, mm. We'll be praying for you. <laughs> oh my gosh! I'll be. I'm gonna bring him to church one Sunday, and you guys, he is a fire to be reckoned with. <laughs> he's a little man. He's so funny. He's so genuine because he's. We went to the grocery store today. So we come home and he holds, he's like, Anya, they call my grandkids call me Anya instead of grandma. Anya, <laughs> I'll hold the front door for you. And he's holding Aww. the store door open for me. He wants Aww. to be a little gentleman Aww. and I love it. So I'm going to encourage Sweet. that. Yeah. Absolutely. We need more of that. <laughs> I know. He is just so Pretty cute. Sweet. Pretty sweet. Well, if anybody else has something else to say, now is the time. Speak now. Well, we are home. very fortunate <laughs> to have a, a, a dad that was uh, so interested in the scripture because most people aren't. I know. I mean, across the board, mm -hmm. most people really don't care. You know, I mean, we know they're busy. We know they're, you know, most people really don't care, you know, and they, they really don't care to dig into the scripture like your dad did, you know, uh, and he was lucky. Was he under Jim Kirkwood? Yeah. 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 That, you should see the that, tapes. We have, you, Dave, we have all, if anybody wants to make copies of tapes, my father and mom have a ton of, they probably have ever. That's how my father actually found Grace Gospel mm -hmm. was through the radio show that Jim Kirkwood did. Yeah, years, yeah. years, years ago. Yeah. And there she is. She needs. That's something. how we got. That's how we got started. Yeah, me yeah. too. Me too. So was it just funny? I, I mean, that's the difference between you know. Otherwise, I'm certain. That being a friendly guy that I am, I would, I would, uh, uh, I'd probably belong to a Pentecostal church somewhere, <laughs> and, and then, but then Jim Kirkwood so. came along. Well, you know, yeah, and uh, and I listened to him, and I said, "Oh my God, this makes sense." You yeah. know, oh, there, there's. There's two gospels. Oh my gosh, I didn't know that. You know, I didn't know any of that. You know, and the uh, the gospel for the kingdom and the gospel of grace. Well, okay, now I'm, uh, 
now I feel like I'm finding out something. <laughs> yeah, we're getting somewhere. <laughs> I started to listen to Kirkwood, but yeah. that's not the way it is in other churches. No. Other churches, if you say that in other churches, you'll get away with it here with John Hora, but the the they sure you the won't ex. you will I'll show you the get door. away with it. You yeah, won't get away with well, Dave, I want to I want to inject something here. We're we're running out of time, and I what you said about the people who don't read their Bible and the most don't, and uh, it's so obvious the people that do, because you all it's so easy to to share Christ with because you have a automatic appreciation for the integrity of the Word of God. That's your go-to place. That's your foundation. That's where you want to see that foundation broadened and deepened and, you know, widening, getting wider and wider and deeper and deeper. It's, uh, it's so precious That's where the to problems you. are solved because it's what God's word says, not what yeah. teachers or pastors, right. you know, it's what God's word says. Yes. And I, I really love you all because you don't find this, in the, in the world, even among my, most of my other Christian friends, even people who've been walking with the Lord for a long time. And there's, there's certain keys like the grace of God and like understanding the various gospels and wh when they applied and what they were, what they, what they meant at the time, like the, you know, the, 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 the gospels, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is the conclusion of the old covenants, the conclusion. It's not the beginning of Christianity. That was Paul. But unless you can see there's a hard stop and there's a whole new regeneration, and otherwise you're going to try to find salvation in the Gospels, thinking it's a new testament. And, and it's very confusing. And so many churches are falling apart. The wheels are coming off because they've been teaching this generationally, confusing people. And who the thief comes to steal whatever that was, so they can't even piece the together in their own prayer life. And and the Bible is not sweet to them to read it. It's laborious. It's hard. But you guys, sweetest people in the world. I mean, I just, I love you all. And, and fellowshipping with you is the delight of my heart. And to every Sunday, from Sunday to Sunday and Wednesday to Wednesday, it just means the world to me that I have this blessing, this opportunity to be with you all. You're just, you're just beautiful. I love you. We're you know, great. I got to go. Gotta go. And thank you so much, thank everybody. You, John. Have a wonderful night, and we hope to see you Sunday. Yeah, Bye. Bye. We'll see you session. Sunday. <laughs> so long. You Bye. 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 I love you. I gotta talk Bye, to you, Jules. Thanks. I know. Bye -bye. I know. Bye, Dan and Dan. Bye. Bye, Bye Louise. Bye. Bye. Bye.